That's better. That one day, this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one... Okay. During the Civil Rights Movement, there were a lot of African Americans who were brought up in poverty. There were a lot who had incredible verbal skills and, and speaking skills. But what is it that made Martin Luther King so much better than all the others in getting their point across? Many of the many of the civil rights leaders during that time talked about what they wanted to change. They didn't attract new followers to stop thinking. Dr. King talked about having a dream that he believed that the world could be better, that there were things that we could do in congruence with one another, that we could work together towards this belief, this dream that things could be better. And because he had the belief system, he was able to cross gender barriers, he was able to cross socioeconomic barriers, and he was able in 1963 to attract a million people to the Mall in Washington. It was because he attracted people who believed in what he believed, not because he was taking things that he wanted to change. And we have a similar situation in our practices. We have patients And for these patients, it's not a plan that motivates them. It's a dream that their lives could be changed by what we do in our offices. That people are not inspired by treatment plans. They're inspired by leaders, and they're inspired by people who have a belief system that they are attracted to. People buy what, what we believe in. They don't buy what we do. The fact that we make teeth, that we make dentures, that we do crowns, that's not important to them. They really couldn't care less. What they're looking for is the benefits and the results that they achieve in changing their lives from the dentistry that we do. And we believe that right now is a great time for dentistry. Today in our culture, people love to spend money on things that make them look good and feel good. And from that mindset, there have been a birth of industries that did not exist 20 years ago. You have the fitness revolution and, and now hot yoga and Pilates and all these things. You have cosmetic surgery. You have health food and diet food programs. You have um, makeup, a huge amount of money spent every year on makeup and products to make people feel better about the way they look. And one of the things that makes people feel better about the way they look and the way they feel is cosmetic dentistry. So we can get involved and we can benefit from that philosophy that most Americans have and the way that they, they want to spend their money. One of the first things that we're going to ask all of you to do tonight, and this is going to be the very first item on your action plan, is to go back to your office the, first, the next time you work, whether it be tomorrow or Monday, and set a time to have a full team meeting to talk about a vision for your business. How many people in this room have a formally written vision for their dental practice right now? Dr. Lozani and Dr. Fisher are both clients, so that's why they have them. Anyone else in the back? A couple more? Okay, excellent. Dr. Capel, I'm not surprised. Excellent. Very, very good. So I'm sure all of you have heard about vision and about, um, you know, in your practice management journals and other lectures that you've taken. And it kind of seems like this spooky, mystical thing that consultants make you do just because they say so. I promise all of you here tonight that if this is the one thing that you take and you really do, you will see a change. So let's talk about why you need a vision. A vision is a clear and compelling idea of the way you want your, your business to be. And the first step in creating a vision is to remove all of the obvious obstacles. So there are things that all of you have tried before that perhaps did not work. There are things that may seem like obstacles that you could not possibly overcome. And that's not actually true. So just make believe that you're going to paint a perfect picture of how you see your practice in one year. And describe in five or six sentences what you want that practice to look like. And I'm going to read for you one of our client visions that was recently developed and is a favorite of ours. And it truly was an epiphany in this practice. Absolutely. When the vision became solidified, 
his practice turned around almost instantly. Production's up an average, production and collection, I should say, are up $20,000 per month in the two months that we've had this vision. And collections do exceed production in our office, and we'll talk more about that later. Uh, to work in a positive environment that is as stress-free as possible, to build a more profitable practice so we can renovate the facility and purchase modern equipment, to treat patients at the highest standard of care possible and in a caring way, not limited by insurance restrictions, to become less dependent on in-network insurance participation and build our fee-for-service patient base, to be considered the premier dental practice in eastern Suffolk County to perform a full scope of procedures focusing on comprehensive care. So this is a practice that was recently purchased. It was purchased one year ago. So some of the things that you see in there describe sort of an antiquated facility that the doctor owner um, purchased. So that's why those things are described. Keep in mind with your vision that it's not something that we share with our patients. Vision is internal. Mission is something when you go on a business website, you see that mission statement. That's something external. That's another exercise that I encourage all of you to do as well. The vision is the foundation. Now, how do you use this vision once you have it? So in this practice, this is one of our client offices, they now understand that every decision that is made, the way that we answer the telephone, the way that we create financial arrangements, the way that we present periodontal care, the way that we treatment plan, everything we do every day is in line with that vision. So for example, if we are about to make a decision and it is not in line with the vision, we have two choices. We either need to say, I can't do that. I need to figure out another way to do it. But we have to look honestly at the vision that we created and say, are we 100% committed to this? Have we all agreed as a team that we can make this happen? So that's why it's very important, doctors. The vision should initially come from you, but it is critically important that your team believes in your vision and that they're on board with you with that vision. Your vision should be like the Pledge of Allegiance. It should be said at the beginning of every meeting. It should be something that everyone pretty much has in their memory. It should be short enough for you to use it in that capacity. It should be used for every single decision that's made. If you're trying to create a high quality, top shelf type practice, then when it comes to buying the toilet paper, do you buy the one ply or the two ply? It's as simple as that. If it is not consistent with what your vision of your practice is, it's the wrong decision. And you have to reevaluate and make differences. As far as the supplies you buy, the procedures you do, everything needs to go back and say, is this decision that we're making, as trivial as it may be, is it consistent with taking our practice where we want it to be six months, a year, three years, five years down the road? And visions can change. If you're, if you're into traveling across country, at first you set your vision on the mountain. And then once you get to the top of the mountain, you can see further and you set a new vision of where you want to go from there. That's the way your vision should operate. So some of the things that you need to ask yourself in creating this vision, you have to look at what you already have, decide if you like what you have and you can keep it, decide if there are things that you need to add, and if there are things you need to change. So it's everything. It's your systems, it's your facility, it's your equipment, it's your team. It's basically a treatment plan for your practice. And a great book, it's actually a book that we're going to raffle off at the end of the night tonight when Dr. Pierre does the rest of the raffles. It's called The Energy Bus. We do recommend that all of you purchase this book, um, purchase enough copies of it for your entire team. It is a quick, easy, enjoyable read, and it really sort of hits the mark when it comes to vision and understanding.